in this lecture we will learn about derivatives okay so first of all we will learn about definition and concept of derivative that will give an imprint on your mind then derivatives by first principle we will see how to calculate derivative from the most basic principle we will look at two examples so we will whatever we have learnt we will apply directly to some of the most fundamental problems okay so first let's look at what is limit so limit limit is the slope of tangent to a function at a given point okay so if this is a function fx let's say we have a function fx as drawn here so now we want to find the derivative of the function okay so the derivative as here the definition says is the slope of tangent to fx at a given point so if we take this point okay so first you need to draw the tangent here a tangent is a point which just touches the graph so something like this so not drawn very clearly but okay this is a line that it tangent it's just touching the point the fx graph at one point let's say c and it is going like this so this point is tangent and let's say it meet x axis then this tan theta or the slope of the tangent to the curve is the derivative okay now you might think what is the use of this finding the slope of the tangent at a given point of a graph it's very important because it gives a lot of information it gives the rate of change of fx of the function with respect to x okay so it gives us the rate of change how fast is the function changing how fast is the graph changing okay so for example this graph let's say if we have a constant function so the derivative of this if you will find little time so the derivative of this function the constant function is zero okay so it implies that this function has a constant derivative or zero derivative which means it's not changing at all because rate of der derivative tells us the rate of change of a function okay and if it is zero for this it means this function is not changing at all so beautiful concept the number tells that it's not changing at all it's zero now but how about a function let's say a straight line that is changing something like this so this is y is equal to x okay now this is changing isn't it this function is changing with x it is always increasing if we see so this is increasing but if we see the increase is constant okay it is increasing but i can determine that okay after some amount of time it is changing constantly okay so this the if you will know that okay f dash x for this is 1 it means it is changing constantly and is independent of where the graph is for from x is equal to 1 to 2 and from 100 to 200 everywhere it is changing constant constantly so this is f dash x is 1 but some function like this one so y is equal to x square so it is changing differently it's changing very fast as we go okay so it's changing quite fast the value is becoming increasing quite fast so we see we will see that f dash x for this is 2x which means it's dependent upon x also so as x increases this function increases faster so this is the importance of derivative 
and you have already learnt limits. So we want to explain this concept in terms of limit. So first thing about tangent. So tangent is of course so you know about secant of a line okay so this is a secant so which passes this at two points so this is a secant but if i increase this secant coming here so somewhere it is coming to this point and this secant becomes a tangent okay so this is what we have drawn here so this white line is a secant to this fx okay but it is not a tangent okay because it's intersecting at two points but if we take the yellow line now it is becoming much closer to a tangent if we take the green line it is in fact almost a tangent and what happens we know that what is the f dash x or derivative it's the slope of the tangent so this angle is the the tangent of this is the slope so this if we can draw here it will be this tan of this okay theta dash dash so here we see this height by this base this is the tan theta okay but for more accurate ones this base is becoming smaller and smaller till it approaches zero which means it becomes one point so now if we see here we come to this place so this is x this is just some point just near to it x plus h so tan theta is height by base so f of x plus h is this height this whole height f of x is this height so this height is subtracted fx plus h minus fx by h okay and now if h tends to 0 this becomes the slope of the tangent okay so this is what we have to understand so this we now understand and f dash x is equal to limit fx plus h minus f of x by h h tends to 0 is the derivative finding derivative by first principle that we promised to tell you okay so this is what we promised finding derivative by first principle so now let's look i said to you that okay for y is equal to x square f dash x is 2x okay so is this true so we will apply here so limit h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x by h this you have to find what is f of x it is x square so limit f of x plus h will be x plus h whole square minus f of x so x square by h h tends to 0 so x square plus h square plus twice x h minus x square by h okay so this is the after expanding this x square gets removed so h square plus 2x h by h now h gets cancelled here so it becomes h plus twice x by 1 limit h tends to 0 so this is h becomes 0 here so it is 2x okay and we find that okay f dash x is equal to 2x where f of x was x square so bingo we saw that the curve the tangent to the curve the slope increases as x increases okay and this you can see from the graph also if you have a graph something like this so let's draw the tangent here so this is the tangent and if it is here so this one is a tan tangent so this theta is much smaller than this theta so of course tan theta for this point x which is larger will be greater so this shows okay now let's try to solve for sine x okay 
so if we have sin x by first principle so f of x plus h minus f of x by h limit h tends to 0 so f of x is sin of x so this is good mathematical exercise to try this out so this becomes sin of x plus h minus sin of x by h limit h tends to 0 so now we will just try out this expression here so this is if you have sin a plus b we know it is equal to sin a cos b plus cos of a sin of b okay so if we expand like this so this is sin x cos h plus cos of x sin h minus sin x and this by h okay so now what happens we try to find out this limit now this is we take the limit here h tends to 0 so this becomes sin x cos h by h okay so let's see so this is sin x we can take out and cos h minus 1 by h limit h tends to 0 plus limit cos x sin h by h okay h tends to 0 so this is because limit h tends to 0 fx plus gx you can take the limits one by one and add them up okay so that's what we did so now this limit let's look at this limit okay so what is this limit so if you remember so this is basically comes out to be zero and this sign limit sign h by h h tends to zero is one so here this becomes cos x and here it becomes so now you have to see why this limit h tends to zero cos h minus one by h so this is zero so why it is so so you have to remember from your limits but we can see that if we apply the L'Hopital's rule so it becomes 1 by minus sine of h which becomes 0 okay so this limit is 0 try to revise it from your limits class this becomes 1 so the limit is cos of x okay so this is the limit for sine x so this is how you find the limits by first principle. So I hope you understand. Thanks a lot.